Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and coming up on tonight's episode, we have brought our American Heartland Tour 2020 to the surprisingly cool area surrounding Fargo, North Dakota. So stay tuned. With roughly 125,000 citizens, Fargo is the most populous city in North Dakota and accounts for nearly 17% of the state's overall population. Founded in 1871 on the Red River floodplain, Fargo is a cultural, retail, healthcare, educational, and industrial center for Eastern North Dakota and Northwestern Minnesota. The city is also home to North Dakota State University. Fargo was an early stopping point for steamboats traversing the Red River during the 1870s and 1880s. It was originally named Centralia, but was later renamed Fargo after Northern Pacific Railway director and Wells Fargo Express Company founder, William Fargo. The area started to flourish after the arrival of the Northern Pacific Railroad, and the city became known as the Gateway to the West. Fargo today is thriving. Its low crime rate, coupled with a decent supply of affordable housing, has prompted Money Magazine to rank Fargo near the top of its annual list of America's most livable cities throughout the late 1990s and early 2000s. ZipRecruiter has named Fargo as the nation's number one hottest job market. We didn't want to stay right in Fargo, so we're about 15 miles east in the campground at Minnesota's Buffalo River State Park, which protects one of the largest and highest quality prairie remnants in Minnesota. The campground has 44 sites, 35 with electric hookups, plus showers, flush toilets, and a dump station. Our electrified site costs $32 per night, although it's important to note that Minnesota State Parks also charge a daily $7 vehicle entry fee in addition to the camping fee. Buffalo River State Park was established in 1937 and developed by the Works Progress Administration. Because much of its land was never cultivated, it's home to one of the largest remnants of northern tall grasslands, an ecoregion largely confined to the Red River Valley. Along the Buffalo River itself, a gallery forest extends across the prairie along both banks. There are 12 miles of hiking trails that crisscross the park. Buffalo River State Park sees high local use, particularly for its unique swimming pool. Here, park officials fill a sand bottom depression with filtered water pumped in from the river. The swimming hole is remaining closed in 2020, however.
Bonanzaville, the museum of the Cass County Historical Society, is made up of 40 buildings on 12 acres on Fargo's west side, many of them historic and from the region. These buildings have been moved to the museum grounds and now form a village setting. However, we arrived right as they were locking the gates for the day, two hours early due to inadequate staffing. So instead we went to, well, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Just look at the screen. The museum is right across the Red River from Fargo in Moorhead, Minnesota, and is operated by the Historical and Cultural Society of Clay County. The center's most notable permanent feature is a Viking ship replica, built by Moorhead resident Robert Asp in 1980. Following his death four months after christening, Asp's three sons and one daughter, along with a crew consisting of another eight, sailed the ship from Duluth, Minnesota, through the Great Lakes and across the Atlantic to Oslo, Norway. Also on the center grounds, the Hopperstad Stave Church replica is a full-scale replica of a Norwegian stave church in Vik, Norway that dates to the 12th century. The church serves as a reminder of the Scandinavian heritage in the Red River Valley. The Fargo Air Museum is located at Hector International Airport in the northern part of the city and includes many historic aircraft, of which 90% are in flying condition. Aircraft on display include a Douglas DC-3, a Fairchild PT-19 trainer, a North American B-25 Mitchell bomber, and a replica Wright Flyer. However, any air museum that houses a North American P-51D Mustang, my favorite airplane of all time, and the aircraft that changed the tide of World War II is going to make me stop to look around.
So we truly hope that you've enjoyed exploring the Fargo area as much as we have. Coming up next week, we're going to be bringing our American Heartland Tour 2020 further northwest in the state of North Dakota. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button, the one right down there in the corner of your screen, and ring that notification bell. That way you'll come along on each and every episode of Grand Adventure that we air every Wednesday evening. And we would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. And it's extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please give us a big thumbs up down below. Finally, while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section. We would love to hear from you on your feedback and comments about this episode of Grand Adventure. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.